This is the Jet Engine Model Components Kit 006 from Bamboo Labs. Let's take a look at building this thing. First, let's take a look at what's in the box. You'll find 80 M2.5 by 10 socket head cap screws. You'll find 80 M2.5 stainless steel hex nuts. 150 M2.5 by 5 by 0 0.5 stainless steel flat washers, two 6204 plastic deep groove ball bearings, and two 6003 plastic deep groove ball bearings. At a minimum, you'll have to provide a 2 millimeter Allen key, some super glue, and some tweezers. It also doesn't hurt to have some needle nose pliers and a three millimeter bladed flat blade screwdriver. And you'll be required to print 1.05 kilograms of filament that takes one day, 17 hours and six minutes. Almost every step of this build requires doing some sort of dry fit followed by gluing the parts together. So start by arranging these rings in ascending order and then you can slide them over this other piece to do a dry fit, followed by putting these three quarter rings into this housing. They have a chamfer on one of the edges to give them an orientation, so you'll know if you're putting them in the right orientation. And if you're not sure about whether or not these fit, these should fit pretty easily, slide in pretty good uh, with no real resistance. Um, you'll have one more left that should go into this part pretty easily and they fit nicely just to double check and then you have four last ones that are much larger and just won't fit into either of those two and it goes they go into this guy here now we can insert this fan blade assembly into the housing to make sure that it fits and to check that it spins freely you can now remove the fan blade assembly and we can start gluing everything together couple dabs of glue onto this black part and then pushing the rings back into place and giving them a little spin to spread that glue around. You don't need much glue here, you're just holding them in place. Once that fan assembly is all glued up, we can insert it back into the housing and we can add a dab of glue to each one of those silver three-quarter rings. Next, we're gonna do some very similar steps with this larger housing, inserting those three quarter rings, dry fitting the blue rings onto the black portion, test fit, give it a little spin, and then remove it so we can add the glue. Same as before, just a couple dabs per ring and then give it a little spin to spread the glue around. Now we can insert the ring assembly into the cutaway housing, make sure it spins. And now we're gonna add some glue to those three quarter rings like we did last time, just a dab on each one and then reinserting it. Next we have the combustion chamber, but be careful because I managed to do this. And nothing a little bit of super glue can't fix, but just be cautious of that when you're trying to pull this ring through with the holes. Otherwise the rest of this subassembly is pretty easy to put together. These little fuel injectors go in really easy. Just put a little dab of glue at the entrance and then make sure that they line up with the hole on that ring that we inserted earlier. and repeat that all the way around. You have one extra by the looks of it. Now we can test fit the bearings onto all of the shafts and make sure that they fit into all the bearing housings. Two 
To assemble the cone, you can just insert the tip into the top of the cone. This was a pretty snug fit, so I decided not to use any glue. For the swirl, you're going to have to do a couple test fits and bend it into shape before you apply any glue, or else it's just not going to stay swirled up correctly. While you still have the glue out, you can glue the exhaust cone to this exhaust housing portion. And this marks the start of a lot of bolts and nuts having to go together. So we're going to do a bolt with a washer through the hole and then a washer and a nut on the other side for every single one of these holes. Now we're going to put the nuts in those pockets. Here's where you'll start to want to use those tweezers to put the nuts in the right spot. And then I found that the flat bladed screwdriver came in handy for just pressing them down if they were quite a snug fit. Now this part was a little bit awkward to get the bolts and the nuts lined up correctly and to get them to take. I think if I were to do this again, I would do them one at a time instead of inserting all of the nuts all at once. I think one at a time would have been a little bit easier. But once those are all tightened down, you can glue the cone onto the front of the fan. Now we're going to bring this shroud component to this main housing component and check the orientation of this bearing here. And then you're also going to check that this part is wider than this other part on the shroud. And now you know that everything is put together correctly. And you also want to have these two holes exposed, one on either side. Once those two parts are bolted together, we can insert the larger bearing into this housing portion and insert the fan assembly. Followed by putting one of these smaller bearings onto the shaft of the fan assembly. Next, we'll put nuts into each one of the pockets on this part here and bolt it to the subassembly from the beginning of the video. Alright, so there's eight holes here and there's seven holes here. And you just want to line up the bottom one. This is one of the trickier parts of the assembly. I opted to not put a washer on the other side of this bolt because it was just too difficult to coordinate the nut with the washer and the needle nose pliers. Um, but just take your time here and you'll get it to work. Now we can attach the ignition chamber as subassembly. You know the drill. It's a bolt, a washer, through the hole, and then a washer and a nut. A bolt and a washer are going into the holes in this subassembly, followed by inserting the shaft in this orientation. I did each of these bolts one at a time. It just seemed easier than coordinating all of them at the same time. Now we're going to grab that second large bearing and put it on the shaft, and then we can press fit into the housing portion here. And once again, we're going to do a bolt with a washer through the holes, followed by a washer and a nut on the other side. Now here's where I ran into some issues with the free spinning nature of this model. I don't know if it was due to the glue up or if something shifted um, once I bolted it all together, but I definitely had a ton of friction on one of the rings, which didn't allow it to spin freely. You should be checking this at each stage to make sure that your model comes out good at the end. In the end, I basically took out one of the three quarter rings that was causing me issues. Before removing it, I did try hooking it up to my drill so that I could try and remove any of that rubbing by potentially just wearing away the high spots, but that didn't help.
Now that's still not perfect, but way better than before. Now we're ready for the final assembly. Take that last bearing and insert it into this part here. And we're gonna add the hex shaft into the back portion. You should do a dry fit here. I went straight to gluing and that was a mistake. Um, I think you could get away with not gluing at all. And then you'd be able to take this thing apart at least part of the way, instead of it just being stuck together for forever. <laughs> And there's some benefits there for if your model isn't spinning freely. Um, but I got stuck with basically having this whole thing connected together. Now we can attach the final bolts for this entire build. And once those two halves are put together, you're done. You can set this thing up on the stand and show it off. I believe I had a misprint on the housing for the combustion chamber, which meant that the innards of the combustion chamber were pressing against the moving parts. And so I didn't get a great free spinning middle section, but the outside ended up turning out pretty good after removing that ring. And this whole model looks really cool. I can't wait to put it up on a shelf and have it on display. So I hope you liked that one. I'll see you in the next one, and I'll leave you with some time lapses of the prints printing on the X1 Carbon.